Today I'll be making a really weird molecule called benzoin. Why am I making benzoin? Well, firstly, it smells great, and secondly, I'm going to use it to make benzylic acid. Benzylic acid in return will be used to make some strange yet legal esters. For the preparation, we are going to need 100 grams of benzaldehyde, 10 grams of potassium or sodium cyanide, 200 grams of ethanol, and 200 grams of distilled water. You should not try any of this at home as I'm using potassium cyanide, which is exceedingly toxic and must be handled with great care. Okay, let's begin by weighing out the potassium cyanide. I wore gloves while doing this because I don't want to poison myself, but I added about 10 grams of potassium cyanide directly to this round bottom flask. The scale was set to zero and we added 100 grams of freshly opened benzaldehyde. To make everything dissolve, a mixture of water and 96% ethanol is being used. We added 200 grams of 96% ethanol and 200 grams of distilled water. If you use a few additional grams of water or ethanol or a few grams less, it won't matter. To start the actual reaction, I threw in a stirfish and attached a reflux condenser. We need reflux because for this reaction to work, high temperatures are required. Without a reflux, the ethanol would simply boil off and with a reflux, I don't need to worry about that. The color changed from clear to what you see on screen right now. 45 minutes have now passed. I'm now going to add a lot of distilled water. While continuing to reflux, I added just enough distilled water to keep the solution clear. When more water is present, the solubility of benzoin will vastly decrease. You don't really need to add water. I added water to increase the yield at the expense of purity, but I'm going to perform a recrystallization anyway, so that doesn't matter. After letting the solution cool down, we were left with this mess. Here you can have a closer look at the reaction. Benzaldehyde is turned into benzoin because of cyanide anions. For all of you who are curious, I also added the reaction mechanism, but I'm not going to talk about it. I also tried another cyanide to prepare benzoin, which was potassium tetracyanonicolate, but it ended up not working and I wasted 200 grams of benzaldehyde on this. It might not have worked because it's a complex and we need free cyanide anions, but I'll never know. With potassium cyanide it worked and tetraethylammonium cyanide also has free cyanide anions and it might also work with this, but I didn't try this. Let's get back to actual chemistry. I opted to perform a gravity filtration because I didn't want more cleanup than necessary and because it was fast enough. During this filtration we get rid of most of the cyanides, but keep in mind that this product will still contain some leftovers and therefore it must be treated as highly toxic. In the end we were left with this crude product which reminded me of scrambled eggs. I want to purify the product, therefore we added everything back to a freshly cleaned beaker and we are going to perform a recrystallization. I still wanted the yields to be as high as possible and didn't want to lose any benzoin and therefore the flask was rinsed using our recrystallization solvent which was 96% ethanol. The ethanol was brought to boil and just enough additional ethanol to dissolve all of the crude product was added. If there's leftover benzaldehyde, potassium cyanide or any other impurities, we will get rid of most of these during this recrystallization. Once everything dissolved, the hot plate was turned off and the beaker was allowed to cool back down to 15 degrees Celsius. The next day we were left with this. The product looked slightly less like scrambled eggs and the solution looked dark red. Another gravity filtration was performed to get rid of the ethanol. The product would normally be colorless or only look slightly yellow, but I'm okay with this as I'm going to use it for another reaction. The product will be air dried to get rid of the ethanol and for this purpose I transferred all of it to this plastic tray. The next day the powder looked dry but it was still a little bit wet. I still decided to transfer it to a storage bottle. The container was weighed in advance in order to be able to determine the yield. When you look closely at the paper, you can see that the product is still slightly wet. We ended up with 98.6 grams, which represents a yield of about 94%. Because it is still slightly wet, the real yield is likely between 85 and 93%. As I wanted to do some tests on the product, I set up this really crude melting point tester. Benzoin has a melting point of about 133 degrees Celsius, so we heated up the mineral oil and waited for something to happen. Once we got nearer the melting point of benzoin, it looked like it got a little wet on the outside, but it didn't want to melt. 
but I guess that it got a little wet on the outside proves that we at least made somewhat pure benzene. The lump of benzene is pretty big, so it might be hard to melt it completely. But in the end, at about 150 degrees Celsius, it melted completely. By the way, if you wanted to repeat this preparation, but you don't have or don't want to use deadly potassium cyanides, you could also use some thiamine, which is also known as vitamin B1. I decided to use potassium cyanide anyways, because I don't have thiamine and potassium cyanides gives higher yields. Let's do a quick smell test with the product. It doesn't smell like benzaldehyde anymore, there's also no trace of an ethanol smell, but it smells great. I hope you enjoyed today's preparation, see you in the next video.